The villain known as Carapax, the indestructible man, has had a brief but mighty impact on the DC Comics universe and has touched the lives of not one, but three Blue Beetles over the years. Daniel Garrett, Ted Cord, and Jaime Reyes. Going originally from a villain in a maxi series to 37 years later, starring in live action. First introduced in 1986 by writer Len Wein and artist Paris Collins, Carapax became an insidious threat for Blue Beetle during his post-crisis run that year. So here today we answer the question, who the heck is Blue Beetle villain, Carapax? And though this series is Blue Beetle's first with DC Comics, it's Blue Beetle's sixth volume. Blue Beetle debuted during the golden age of comics in the 1940s through Fox Feature Syndicate, a publishing firm run by a guy named Victor Fox. And then freelancing for Eisner and Iger, Jack Kirby came on board in 1940 to do the Blue Beetle comic strip after he broke away from his tenure as a back page story in Mystery Men. Following the book-burning assault on comic books, which culminated in Frederick Wortham's famous Senate hearings and the creation of the industry self-regulating body, the Comics Code Authority, Fox and many other publishers went out of business. In Fox's case, Blue Beetle transferred from Fox to Charlton Comics. And then in the early 1980s, as Charlton 2 began its decline and march toward being defunct, DC Comics purchased their IP. They bought their characters. DC Comics intended to incorporate them into their new event called the Crisis on Infinite Earths in 1985 after they nearly appeared in Alan Moore's Watchmen series. DC liked these characters enough to want to use them on an ongoing basis, hence the change. That's when Peacemaker, The Question, Captain Adam, Nightshade, Judo Master, and Blue Beetle made the jump to a big two publisher. And so, with that newest debut, Wayne and Collins gave Blue Beetle a brand new rogues gallery, including Carapax. In this miniseries, Ted Cord, the Blue Beetle, had been investigating the death of his uncle Jarvis Cord for quite some time. Jarvis had a laboratory on an island called Pago Island, where he was attempting to create an entire robot army, which he would use to take over the world. Ted had even helped his uncle build the robots, making them invincible, though Ted didn't know the full scope of their work, and really how evil his uncle Jarvis was. Ted was convinced Jarvis faked his own death so he could work on his army in seclusion and in safety. Ted found an old box full of notes and film and maps and that documented the project, and Ted took this to his old college archaeology professor, none other than Dan Garrett, the original Blue Beetle. Together they headed to Pago Island, and it turns out that Ted was correct. His uncle was still alive, and so Jarvis, displaying a wanton arrogance, showed them his army and the indestructible robot that would serve as the vanguard for his new metal militia. Dan used his scarab to transform into Blue Beetle, and he fought back until Jarvis blew up his robots, sacrificing them and himself in an attempt to stop Blue Beetle. Then as Dan lay dying, he made Ted promise that he would carry on for him, and so Ted took on the mantle of the Blue Beetle. The Azure Scarab was lost with Dan, and so Ted created his own version, and he went on to be successful heading up Cord Incorporated, where Cord stands for Cord Omniversal R&D Incorporated. Ted had his secret complex beneath Core that he entered through a passage at the bottom of Lake Michigan off the coast of Chicago, Illinois, and that's where he'd parked his bug ship, among other things. Enter Conrad Carapax. Conrad Carapax was once an archaeologist who became bitter and jealous of his rival, Dr. Daniel Garrett. And so after Garrett passed, Conrad went to Pago Island to explore. He was trying to find what Garrett was hunting for that led to his demise. Conrad spent weeks there searching, digging, and exploring and trying to find Garrett's secrets and the reason for his death. And then a lieutenant named Max Fisher from the Chicago police was still investigating Dan Garrett's death, even pulling in favors from Interpol for his investigation. And convinced he had something to do with it, Lieutenant Fisher went to see Ted Cord at his office, and he said he was convinced that Ted knew more than he was letting on. Indeed he did, for he knew about the lab and was fearful that knowledge would get out if Maxwell kept probing. And then on Pago Island, Carapax finally found Jarvis' secret lab hidden beneath the cave and the rock slide as he was drawn there by this constant electric humming. He eventually worked his way through the caverns to a locked door, and he was intent on getting through that door no matter what. While Carapax was working on the door, Chicago PDLT Max decided to take some personal time from work, and he used that time to travel to Pago Island, still intent on solving the mystery surrounding Garrett's death. On the island, Carapax used explosives to force his way past the blast door, finally stepping foot into the abandoned subterranean laboratory. Conrad found a cybernetic helmet nearby and put it on his own head, trying to activate the robot. But what happened was it malfunctioned, and Conrad was electrocuted, and he died. And that's it. Short video. No, I'm just kidding. Conrad's body died, but his mind was transferred into the robot, and he lived on inside the robot. He now fully and completely embodied Carapax, the indestructible man. As Max neared the island on the vessel he chartered, Carapax ambushed them from below, destroying the tramp ship and smashing it against the island's reef. The vessel ran aground and was stuck on shore. 
Carapax then attacked the crew from the shadows, convincing them that the island was cursed and haunted. Meanwhile, Ted Cord had gone to the precinct to ask Max for help with another investigation, which is when he learned that the LT had taken time off and then Ted saw a map on Max's desk which had Pago Island circled, so he knew where to go next. When he got to the island, Ted switched into his Blue Beetle gear as he saw the ruined ship and the dead crew around a the campfire. There was one sailor who was barely alive, but he ended up dying of fright aboard the bug. Ted then linked up with Lieutenant Fisher who told him he'd been tracking a big red creature with bug eyes and at that moment, Carapax the indestructible man smashed through a wall and ran into Cord and Fisher for the first time ever. Max tried to shoot Carapax, but he was encased in an experimental, virtually indestructible ceramic polymer and so the bullets bounced off his outer shell. Max and Ted ran into the tunnel system and ended up battling inside the underground lab. Max and Ted trapped Carapax in the lab and ran out as the explosives they set detonated. But Carapax wasn't done. As they got into Blue Beetle's bug, Carapax smashed his way to the surface and attacked the craft, fighting through blasts of solar energy to get to them. Carapax threw boulders at the bug as it hovered above and he even fired wrist rockets in an attempt to shoot them out of the sky. Blue Beetle flew to the other side of the island and blew up the ship that was still stranded there, destroying Carapax's only way off the island. But again, Carapax wasn't done. He grabbed some electrical wiring and lassoed it to the beetle's bug, carrying him up into the sky as the bug gained altitude. Carapax smashed through a port window and inside the ship, so Ted and Max climbed outside and escaped, then had the ship drop altitude, which caused Carapax to fall from the sky, and he plunged into the murky depths of the Atlantic Ocean. He sank. Since Carapax was now an indestructible mech robot, he didn't need to rely on oxygen and so he merely walked along the bottom for weeks, following the signal of a microtracer he'd put in Beetle's bug and it led him to Garrett's secret headquarters in Lake Michigan. They ended up fighting in Blue Beetle's headquarters, but no fire, no acid, no crushing weight of falling rubble could stop Carapax. Blue Beetle lured him into the bog and then jumped out, self-destructing his own ship in the process to finally bring Carapax down. And it wouldn't be until nearly 20 years later, 2006, when we see Carapax again, this time in issue 841 of Action Comics. It's there as he came ashore in Baltimore, causing destruction that forced Superman to respond that we learned that Carapax had been back for a couple years, and in that time he'd been busy raiding warehouses and R&D firms that he could hit quickly and get out, and that he'd really kept out of the major cities where all the big superheroes were, until now. He was there to steal circuitry only available at Dayton Labs in Baltimore. Superman attacked Carapax with his eyes, but Carapax just laughed it off, revealing that he'd installed thermocouple converters under his exoplates that allowed him to convert Superman's heat vision into his own strength. And then Firestorm showed up to assist, blasting Carapax with his power, but Superman stopped him, telling him that he isn't inside the suit, but that Carapax is the suit, a living armor, and if Firestorm turned him to hydrogen, that he would kill Carapax. They're heroes. They don't kill. Instead, Firestorm converted half of Carapax's internal copper wiring into germanium, which slowed him down to the point where Carapax was unconscious and had just enough power to run his onboard power source just enough to keep him alive. In 2008, Amanda Waller revealed to her Suicide Squad team that after Superman's run-in with Carapax, he was sprung from jail with help from some fancy lawyers that worked for an outfit called Hake Bruton. HB was working on bioweapons like their highly communicable viral agent that they called Scarlet Tears. HB used Carapax's tech to make a garrison of mechs that served as security for the island that HB built in the southwest part of the Persian Gulf, which housed their corporate headquarters and their shady activities. The Suicide Squad was tasked with assaulting the island and taking out the entire board of directors, cutting the head off the dragon, if you will. Waller had Deadshot and Flag kill the board, while Marauder, White Dragon, Black Guard, and General Eiling, as the heavy hitters, were tasked with engaging the Carapax army. The rest of the team would then assault the complex and deal with the rest of the staff and personnel while this guy named Kimo destroyed the labs, the storage, and other facilities on the island. When the assault began, the board of directors activated their Carapax army and a ferocious battle ensued. There was one guy on the Suicide Squad team though, General Eiling, the man who'd helped birth both Captain Adam and Major Force, betrayed the team and he took payment from the HB board of directors to ambush his own team. When he was activated, the Carapax army was then deactivated. Carapax Prime, however, was seemingly separated already and off-island during the attack. And then in 2009, in a Blue Beetle series starring the newest Blue Beetle, Jaime Reyes, many of Ted's old rogues gallery came back at the same time for revenge as they teamed up, Carapax included. Since his last run-in, he rebuilt himself to be invulnerable to technology. 
tech attacks by making his main systems powered by steam. Blue Beetle fired a blast at Carapax and he managed to damage the mech's shoulder armor, making a small crack in it. He fired a rocket at the crack and it exploded, taking Carapax down in a fiery, heated mass of twisted, lifeless metal. And that's the last time we saw Carapax in Prime DC Universe. However, Carapax was also featured in the 2009 Brave and the Bold comic book series, a title tying into the Batman Brave and the Bold animated series. That book opened with Aquaman and Batman teaming up to defeat Carapax. Batman suggested that Aquaman wipe Carapax's memory so that he could be broken down and stored safely in the Royal Atlantean Vault. Most recently, as of the recording of this video, Raul Max Trujillo portrays Carapax in DC Studios' 2023 film Blue Beetle. Raul is most notably known for his tenure on the Mayans MC TV series. The film also stars Sholo Maraduena as Jaime Reyes, the titular Blue Beetle for the film, along with Susan Sarandon as Victoria Cord, another villain, Bruna Marquezine as Jenny Cord, George Lopez as Uncle Reyes, and Becky G as the voice of Kaji Da, Blue Beetle Scarab. And so that is the story of Carapax, the Indestructible Man. That's a wrap on this one, my friends. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.